everyone. Hi, Ingrid. I'm outside today. It's a beautiful day and I'm going to be talking about things that I've learned, tips and tools on doing this type of mandala work on stone and on canvases. And I'm going to show you uh, along the way I've been learning and experimenting with different kinds of things that I've, I've bought different tools to try and do this work and I'm going to show you things that I've tried that worked and things that didn't work so well. So uh, more of you can paint from my tutorials in your dining room or your kitchen. I have uh, one subscriber, uh, Tabasco Peppers, I think it is, who is holding mandala painting parties in her house and they watch the tutorial and then they follow right along. And it's a great idea. I think that's, that would be so much fun. I would go to one of those if I were nearby. <laughs> Anyway, um, we're going to go inside and I'm going to walk you through some of the things that I've learned along the way. This is how I set up a table for my students when I'm teaching a class. They each get a rock or a canvas that's already been painted with a matte black paint. And then they get a primary size pencil, a standard size pencil, and a manicure stylus. Uh, they also get these pointy Q-tips. These can be used to make dots or to clean up messes. I always have their paints ready to go and I cover them with a piece of damp paper towel so they don't form a skin while we're waiting for everybody to show up. They also get a Ziploc bag with more damp paper towel because they're going to use that to clean off their tools. And everybody gets a piece of cardstock to practice making dots on before they actually use it on the canvas. And then a glass of water with a paintbrush so they can mix their paints with the white. And of course I have a couple blow dryers on hand to get everything dried off. Now let's talk a little bit about paint differences. These paints all have their prices on them. They range from 80 cents up to $15, believe it or not in just the different quality of paint. I'm going to show you what these look like on a rock painted black and then on a bare rock. They will uh, differ in their thickness and in their vibrancy. So you can really see how the paints are very different. And you'll just have to experiment. I tend to like the uh, golden fluid acrylics even though they're very expensive because they stay bright and I really like the consistency of them. Here I'm doing it again only with the red. I'm using Americana and Folk Art and Martha Stewart and the golden fluid acrylics. You can see just in the little palettes there how different they are in their thickness. And I'm going to show you this when they're dry after a minute here they're going to dry and you'll see that some of the paints have already faded but the golden fluid on the far left has stayed vibrant and smooth and glossy and it's just a wonderful paint. Now this is uh, some pearl paints I wanted to show you just how they are different in their consistency they're just lovely and thick glitter paints tend to be very translucent and they don't really work for dotting unless you're putting them on top of another dot. These pearl paints can be used just as they are. You don't have to mix them with anything and they will make nice plump dots that don't run and that stay the color you want them to. I just love working with these paints. Now how about some tools? You can get a set of six palettes for about two dollars. All these things are usually under six dollars or less. So let's get some of these a try and you can see what kind of dot you get as a result. First let's try these special dotting tools that I got from Michael's Crafts. They have kind of a spongy dotting end and I tried those and uh, I just didn't like the results. See how they're kind of empty in the middle like a sponge. So then I tried some glue sticks and glue sticks work pretty well. I was surprised at how well these turned out. They're not very good for walking the dots but to do the just a first initial dot was really very good. 
Now these are called shaker pegs and these come in all different sizes. This is a medium size and the shaker pegs also worked very very well in just getting a single clear dot. Not so well for walking the dots because wood tends to um, not leave paint in a circular pattern after you've walked it out. So here's a smaller sh shaker peg. Again, really good for singular dots, nice clear edges, and then it starts to mess up as you walk them out. You know, here are the largest sizes that I could find in the shaker pegs. I think these were called people pegs because sometimes I need a really large dot when I'm working on a canvas. And these actually, eh, they were okay. They weren't great. I've also used uh, a glue stick lid and that works pretty well too. These weren't so great. Now I tried some rounded brushes and these were absolutely horrible. These made the worst dots ever. Yuck. And now, da da da, these actually work really great. These are a, a set of drill bits. And because they're in varying sizes in degree, you can really get a dot within a dot within a dot. And they will fit because they're designed to do that. So these work great for individual dots. Get a little messy when you try and walk them out, but they really make fine dots. Now let's look at some tools for smaller dotting. You can use a pencil eraser. This is my favorite manicure stylus. It's by Essence, and I get this at my beauty supply store. It's got a kind of a fat end and a skinny end. But you can also use pointy Q-tips if you're going to have a class and you need to have a lot of inexpensive tools. A pointy Q-tip works just great to do the small dots. You can also use a popsicle stick. I got these at a, uh, Michael's in their baking section. And the popsicle sticks work just great. I actually prefer these to a small wooden dowel. And I'm just showing you the difference in size here between a pencil eraser and a popsicle stick. Now these are uh, embossing tools used uh, to work with clay. This is sort of a larger version of a manicure stylus. These were also excellent in making small dots and you can walk these out just fine. And I found a curved brush. Oh my goodness, I've been looking for one of these forever because I know this is what Elspeth McLean uses for her dotting. And oh my, they make beautiful dots and you can go bigger or smaller. It doesn't matter. It just depends on the pressure you put on the brush. So it is a fantastic tool and I was having a lot of fun with it. They're just extremely hard to find. Now back to the metal tools from the hardware store. You can't really do a hex bolt because of the shape. These are carriage bolts. Uh, they didn't work very well either. This is a peg, a, a spike, and it's a nice round end, but it really didn't work great. Um, I did try, as I said before, this set of drill bits, and they were great until I got to the largest drill because the end was convex, and so it didn't work. So I got out another set of drill bits. These are Craftsman, and these were nice and flat and had beveled edges. And these absolutely were the best. I couldn't believe the glorious dots that these made and how you can put one dot inside another. And look at those clean edges. Oh my goodness, these were absolutely perfect. And just a little bit on finishes. This is a gloss finish here. I did it on half the rock so you can see how wet and reflective it is. And this is a satin finish on these two rocks. On this one, you can hardly tell where it's been sprayed, but it does have a satin finish that will protect your paint. And on a bare rock, of course, it just makes the rock look wet. And here it is on a fully painted rock. It's nice because it's not too reflective and you really see the painting work you've done.